Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I am Montoya. I run a little gaming guild and uh, very recently I launched or rather relaunched a utility token to use within that guild. And in doing so, I've learned some interesting uh, lessons and I like to make a couple of videos uh, basic documenting my journey through this and explaining the important lessons I've learned as I've gone along because this doesn't exist anywhere else. In my search to find information, there's been nothing which describes what I do and uh, very few people are actually helpful on these issues, which is interesting because crypto is supposed to be uh, open source, which it is, but there are very few people willing to reach out and help for whatever the reasons are. So I'm going to document a couple of interesting things I've come across. And uh, this past week has been particularly interesting uh, on relaunching this token on Solana uh, in that I've learned some fascinating things which are wildly misunderstood. And the topic today is going to be around the uh, liquidity pools and liquidity in tokens. So to quickly explain what is going on, when you go to a stock exchange, and uh, you want to buy a thousand shares of Tesla. There's someone on the other end of that trade who wants to sell a thousand shares of Tesla. So when there's a lot of liquidity in whatever security, it's not a problem on exchange because people are always buying and selling. But what do you do when there's an illiquid security? Now, in a stock exchange, you'll have what's called market makers. A market maker will take the other end of a trade and basically try profit from the arbitrage of it. Web3 has uh, a very unique and elegant solution to this issue. And uh, they call it swaps. But for swaps, you've got to have a thing called liquidity pools. And a nice way to visualize a liquidity pool, we'll get to the interesting part in a second. Bear with me here, guys. <laughs> okay, Think of a bowl, all right? Now, in that bowl, you're going to put the developer who's making the token to kick off the tradability of this token is going to put in their token. In my case, it's Space Bucks. SBX. And he's also going to put in some cash. So let's say, let's take an amount, let's say $10. Excuse my terrible writing there. That's a dollar sign, by the way. All right. <laughs> so to kick off a liquidity pool, you got to put in the token and you got to put in some money. And uh, that initial, this initial pool is out there that anyone can now interact with. So if you wanted to get some space bucks, you would pull out some space bucks and you'd put in some money. Vice versa, if you're selling space bucks, you'd put it into the bowl and you'd pull out some money. And this is all automated and done automatically on the actual swap site itself. Uh, it's a very elegant solution that also changes the price according to supply and demand. It's nothing that the person controls. It's all done automatically on the exchange side of it. And when I kicked off space bucks, the interesting thing, well, a couple of interesting things. The first interesting thing that happened is that within minutes, I'll be launching it, and I didn't tell anyone about this. Uh, I was contacted by someone on Discord, and they're asking me if I'd locked the liquidity pool. So our first question to this guy was, how'd you find this? And apparently there are bots which scan the blockchain for new listings, and people will get notified from these bots and immediately want to pile in and put money in in hopes that they're early on something which may run. But before this individual was willing to commit money to something he knew nothing about, <laughs> he wanted to know that I had locked the liquidity pool. And uh, I mustered up the courage to uh, let him know I had no idea what I was talking about and say, why would I burn or lock the liquidity pool? And he was very patient with me and explained it. So the dev cannot withdraw the liquidity pool and it makes new investors have more confidence in buying. So what he's basically saying is, I had put in 10 bucks and I've put in some space bucks. Now he wants to buy a dollar worth, right? So he's gonna come in, he's gonna throw in one dollar. Why is my dollar sign so bad? And he's gonna take out one dollar worth of space bucks. But he wants to know that the $10 I put in is not going anywhere. He doesn't want me to yank my $10 out because if I yank out my $10, and the price of space bucks increases for whatever reason. Elon Musk just announced that space bucks is now the official currency of Mars. There's appreciation in his dollar. He cannot withdraw that dollar out because I have taken out what was there before. He wants to know that that $10 is there. And should the value of his dollar go up, he'd be able to go into the pool and pull out two, three, four, five dollars which comes out of that section. So he wants that confidence there. So the, the interesting thing which hit me right away is that I went and Googled it and I looked, looked up lock liquidity pool to read what is said online. And like he said, if you research it, you get the same thing. 
This means that a certain percentage of the assets has been locked and cannot be withdrawn by the developers. Now, that's the key word, which gives investors a sense of security against their investments. So I'm going to go against everything which is written online ever for this because this is just security theater. That's all it is. Locking liquidity pools does nothing to protect an, in, an investor when sure everyone putting money in because what happens is if there's a wallet that owns a lot of tokens, if it's a friend or someone just came in early that owns a lot of it, the lock tokens only affect the developer who has locked it. Those, the, sorry, the locked money, the locked dollar value is only locked to the developer. It is not locked to anyone else. So anyone else coming along and dumping in any amount of tokens can freely access all the liquidity in there. Locking liquidity does nothing to protect this guy because whoever owns more of the tokens from somewhere else can dump in at any time and just wipe out the liquidity pool even if it is locked to the developer. Uh, so this was a fascinating lesson to learn. And as I research and look around, you don't see it anywhere. Uh, it doesn't mention that. And uh, I think it's a critical thing to understand. So if you are looking into Web3, if you're looking to buy tokens and you see someone say, token is locked, it is safe, it is not safe. Definitely not. Now, renouncing, let's touch on the base on this. Renouncing uh, is very important also. Renouncing means that the person who created the token cannot make changes to the fundamentals of that token. Uh, in the example of Space Bucks, there are 42 million Space Bucks and that is all there will be. It is fixed because the contract is renounced. I cannot go in and change that number to 1 billion. I cannot change that number to 50 billion. The number will always be 42 million because contract is renounced and that can be checked by uh, looking at the contract itself on many sites which do cover it. So you will always see uh, in any of these tokens you come across, they say liquidity is locked and contract is renounced, so it is safe. That is not true. Locked, liqu locked liquidity does not mean it is safe. Any wallet can come in and basically dump in and pull out all that liquidity, uh, and that is beyond the dev's control even. So uh, that was an interesting lesson, and I want to pass that along while it's still fresh in my head. Um, I had this guy keep on asking me, uh, if he should buy, and uh, I have to say no. Look, Space Bucks is new. We are distributing. We are giving it out. Uh, if you ask me if you should buy apples, and I'm saying I'm giving you apples right now, don't buy it. So that's where we stand on this issue. Uh, we have 21 million tokens. We are distributing. Um, lots of people are coming up and having some very interesting ideas of what we can possibly do in the future. So thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, please keep them coming in. Uh, and uh, that is essentially the lesson for today. So I hope I've uh, taught you something new. And uh, if you have anything you'd like to add to this topic or something I may have gotten wrong, please let me know. Your comments below are always appreciated. And I will catch you in the next one.